All right, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna cover how we can handle routes that don't exist inside of a Vue 3 application. Okay, so here within VS Code, I have opened up a Vue 3 project that I have created for this demonstration. And what you're currently seeing here on the screen is our configuration for our Vue router, which can be found inside of our router folder here. And then we have this file called index.js. Now for this application, as you can see here inside of our routes array, I've already created a few different routes. But what happens if we navigate to a route that doesn't exist here inside of our routes array? So here inside of the browser, I've opened up the application twice. The one on the left hand side here doesn't have the implementation for handling routes that don't exist. And the one on the right here does. So if we take a look at the left hand side here first and within our navigation, if I start to go to different routes, you can see everything works great. Now, if I go up to the URL and I type in a route that doesn't exist, and for this application, I know I don't have a route called about us. If we hit enter here, we're just going to get this blank white page. Now, you may be wondering, why are we still seeing the navigation and the footer here? And if we go back over to the project here, you can see that the navigation and the footer are not a part of the router view. So we're always going to see those regardless to if we have that route or not. OK, so now if we head back over to the browser and we uh, take a look at the right hand side here. So now, for example, if I start going to routes here, you can see everything works fine. But if I go to a route that doesn't exist, so for example, we'll do about us again, you can see that I'm now going to get this uh, little indication here saying, sorry, this page does not exist. And we can have a button that takes us back to the home page. So back here within our router configuration, let's see how we can implement this into our application. So where we're gonna do this is within our routes array here, and pretty much what we wanna do is create a new route. So what I'll do is I'll come below the last route here, and to save some time, I'll paste this in. So for our new route here, for the path, what we're doing is we're using a custom param here of path match, and then we're also using a regular expression here to match anything. So pretty much what this will do is if the route isn't found, it's going to catch it right here. All right, so for the name, we just said not found, and then for the component that we're gonna be using, I have a component already created here called page not found. So if we go over here to my views, you can see we have page not found here. So we just have a header tag here, and then we have a router link that's taking us back to the home page, and that's all we need to do. So if we make sure that we save this, and now we head back over to our application here. Now, for example, if we go to a page that doesn't exist, and we say about us, we'll now get this page here that says, sorry, this page doesn't exist and we can now navigate back to the home page. Okay, so we implemented our catch all route, which is going to check to see if the route exists here inside of our routes array. And if it doesn't, then we'll I'll put this page not found component. Now we can get a little bit more specific with this, and I don't see very many use cases for this, but I did want to show you that it is possible. So what I want to do here is I want to have a catch route for anything that begins with slash features here. OK, so what we'll do is we'll create a new route here and we'll create this right below our uh, route for our features and I'll paste this in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the path here. So first off, we're going to say slash features, which will match this right here. And then we're going to do our custom param of path match. Let's not move that. And then our regular expression here. And then for the name, we have not found feature. And then for the component we want to display, it's going to be a new component called feature not found, which if we head over to our views here, we have this component right here, which is very similar to the page not found, except I added the span tag here for feature. And then we have our router link navigating you back to the features route. OK, so now if we head over to our application and we head over to our features. Now, if we type in anything that doesn't exist that begins with slash features here, we should get a different custom page that's going to display to us that the features page that we're looking for doesn't exist. And like I said, probably not very practical to do this for this example, but I did want to show you that it is possible. So now if we say about us here, we should get this custom page that we have specifically for this route that begins with slash features. And as you can see here, we have sorry, this feature page does not exist and then return back to the features route here. OK, so even though we've implemented our catch all route, we still have one location within our app where we could potentially see a blank white page and where that's at is within our testimonials route here. 
So what I'm doing, which is very common to do, is I'm outputting a list of testimonials here that I have within a JSON file, or it could be your database, it doesn't really matter. So for each one of these testimonials here, I have an ID associated to it, and when we click on one of these cards here, what we're doing is we're getting navigated to a new view, and we're assigning a param to this route with the ID here. So as you can see for this testimonial, we have an ID of zero. If I go back to the testimonial page here and click on the second one, you can see it has an ID of one, and I think you kind of get the idea. But what happens if we navigate to one of these testimonials and the user says, oh, I want to try going to a random one and see what happens. So for example, within my JSON file, I know I don't have an ID or a testimonial with an ID of 10. So if I do this, you can see that we get this blank white page because that testimonial doesn't exist inside of my data. So you may be also asking, well, why doesn't our catch all route catch this and then display our not found page? And the reason why is because this is a valid route. The param on here is not. So what we want to do is we need to have what they call a guard on this route. And we want to check before we go into this route that the ID that the user is passing or the param that they're passing is valid and exists inside of our data. So here within our router configuration, let's begin to implement this. So first off, what we wanna do is navigate down here to our route that we have for our single testimonial. And what we're gonna be doing is the ID that is being passed here or the param of ID that is being passed here on this route, we wanna do a check up against our data to ensure that the param of ID that they're passing exists inside of our data. Now, this may look differently for you depending on how you're handling things. Now, for me, it's quite simple. I have this testimonial.json file right here that I'm using to output all of our testimonials. So in order to make that check, what we wanna do is import this uh, JSON file into our router here. So Let's navigate up to the top here and then I'll copy and paste this in here. So we're going to import and we're going to call this testimonials JSON and then we're going to import it from uh, the assets folder where we have this JSON file. Okay. So now the next thing you want to do is actually create our before enter guard here on this specific route. So we'll say before enter and we'll pass the two parameter here. And then to save some time, what I'll do is copy and paste in some of the logic here for uh, this guard. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable for the ID being passed. So we'll parse int it. And then what we're going to be parsing is the two. So we're going to reference our two parameter here. Then we can get access to the params on this route by saying params. And then we're going to get the ID, which is referring to this right here. Okay, then we're going to create another variable for our local testimonials here, which is the variable name, and we're going to set it equal to our testimonials JSON, and then we have that array of testimonials. So if we go into our JSON file here, I'm referring to this right here. All right, now the last thing we're doing is we're checking to see if this uh, ID actually exists using the sum method here. So we're going to say local testimonials.sum, and then we're going to pass the uh, param here of testimonial and we're going to check to see if that ID equals the ID that is being stored right here. Now if this is true that means or if this equates to true then that means we have that ID within our data. Now if it doesn't that means we don't have that and then we want to do a redirect to somewhere. So what we'll do is we'll say if, and then we'll say if exists is false. So we'll just copy this in here. So if this is false, then what we wanna do is we'll say return, and then we'll say name here, and then where we wanna take them is to this not found page here. So we'll say name, and then not found like that. Okay, so now if we head back over to our application here, and we try to go to our testimonials and let's say we click on this one and we change the ID to something we don't have. Let's say we try 10. You can see now we get redirected to this page saying, sorry, this page does not exist. Now, one thing you may have noticed when our guard kicks in for when our param of ID here doesn't match anything that we have within our data is that the path that we try to navigate to gets removed from the URL here. So for example, if I type in an ID of 11, which we don't have, you can see we get redirected, but the URL here or the path that we had inside of the URL gets removed and we don't want that to happen. So let's fix that. Now here where we're going to return the user to this route with the name of not found, we wanna add a few things to preserve the path that they were trying to get to. So I'm gonna add a comma here within this and I'm gonna paste in a few more things. So the first thing here we're gonna do is add some params here, which this is going to preserve the current path that the user is trying to navigate to. 
Okay, so the next two things here are going to preserve the query and hash if we have any. All right, and that's all we need to do to preserve the current path that they were trying to navigate to if the ID they had typed in does not exist. So let's give this a try. Now, if we head up here to our URL and if we change the ID to something we know we don't have, we'll say 11 again, you can see that we get redirected, but we also have preserved here inside of the URL the path that we tried to get to. Now, this will also preserve any query strings you were to add to this path as well. So say, for example, we have a query string of title equals hello. If we hit enter, you can see it's also going to preserve that once we get redirected here. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you guys did enjoy, be sure to leave a like on it down below and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.